Rey Mysterio was born Oscar Gutierrez on December 11th, 1974. Although synonymous with Mexican culture, Mysterio was born in America in Chula Vista, California. Mysterio debuted in wrestling at the young age of just 14 years old after being trained by his uncle Rey Mysterio Sr. La Lagarita Verde, aka the Green Lizard, as well as under the name Colibre, which loosely translates to Hummingbird. Somewhere in 1991, it's believed was the year that Rey Mysterio's uncle gave Oscar Gutierrez the Rey Mysterio name, and from then on it would be known as Rey Mysterio Jr., Mysterio was a star in the AAA promotion in Mexico from 1992 right up until around 1995. During this time, Mysterio had many matches with Juventud Guerrera. The work caught the attention of Paul Heyman, who of course was the head honcho of ECW at the time. Heyman brought in Mysterio to work a match with Psychosis. Juventud Guerrera was also brought into ECW around this time as well. And Heyman is credited for introducing this new fast paced lucha style to the American audience outside of Southern California and Texas, of course. Mysterio would do work for Heyman all the way until March of 1996. That's when Eric Bischoff and WCW came calling where Mysterio signed and soon the rest of the luchadors followed, like Psychosis, Juventud Guerrera, and the list goes on. Mysterio debuted in WCW on June 6, 1996 at the Great American Bash pay-per-view, challenging the Cruiserweight Champion Dean Malenko. And although a losing effort, Mysterio turned quite a few heads in that first night, the Cruiserweight Championship concept in of itself was a new concept for WCW. There was an attempt to launch a light heavyweight division, which failed because quite frankly, it really wasn't much of a division outside of Brian Pillman. Didn't take long for Mysterio to win his first WCW Cruiserweight Championship. Less than a month after his official TV debut, Mysterio defeated Malenko to win the title on July 8th, 1996 episode of Monday Nitro. The initial reign for Mysterio lasted just over three months as he would drop the title back to Malenko at the Halloween Havoc pay-per-view in October of 1996. Mysterio closed out 1996 by feuding with Ultimo Dragon over the J-Crown series of championships which took him into 1997, where he would briefly feud with the WCW television champion, Prince Iakea. The better part of 1997 for Mysterio was spent feuding with the NWO and former AAA comrade Conan. After that spell, Mysterio was transitioned back into the cruiserweight title picture and would win the WCW Cruiserweight Championship from Eddie Guerrero at Halloween Havoc 1997. The second reign for Mysterio was brief as he would lose the title back to Guerrero on the November 10th, 1997 edition of Nitro. On January 15th, 1998 on WCW Thunder, Mysterio would win his third Cruiserweight Championship by defeating his old rival, Juventud Guerrera. Another short reign for Mysterio as he would lose the title just nine days later to Chris Jericho at the sold-out 1998 pay-per-view. At Bash at the Beach 1998, Mysterio returned from knee surgery to defeat Jericho and win his fourth Cruiserweight title. However, the result was overturned the next night on Nitro. From there, Mysterio feuded once again with Eddie Guerrero, this time as a resistant force to Eddie's new group, 
spinoff of the NWO known as the LWO or Latino World Order. Guerrero would attempt to lure Mysterio into the group while Ray would refuse. Eventually, he lost a match to Eddie that more or less forced Ray to join the group. It was around this time that Ray first started teaming with Billy Kidman, who WCW Brass saw a lot in and no question was talented. But I can't help but just edit in hindsight how much Mysterio should have been slotted as the complete cruiserweight brand there. But instead, we get a lot of guys like Kidman, which as history panned out, Mysterio is basically the only guy with the legacy that a lot of old WCW fans remember. Anyway, remember the LWO that I mentioned? Well, I guess at some point Mysterio embraced the group and then eventually ended up taking it over. This led to another confrontation with the NWO, which ultimately led to one of the more controversial points in Ray's career as he was booked to lose his mask at Super Brawl in February of 1999. The match and build was very rushed and Mysterio felt betrayed by the company as losing the mask was a huge deal for Ray and the Lucha Libre culture in general. Ray has went on record in many interviews stating that he felt like if he did not agree to lose his mask in the match, that he would have lost his job with WCW, which is saying a lot about how Mysterio viewed himself and his worth at that point in his career. You would think that he would have had value in the open market and possibly had the attention of WWE. Even Mysterio more than likely was told by many that due to his size, WWE was probably not even a possibility. From there, Mysterio spent the next couple months doing a sort of giant killer gimmick where he would be trolled out as almost a sideshow act to overcome the odds and defeat big men like Kevin Nash, Bam Bam Bigelow, and Scott Norton. Although Mysterio was a popular act in WCW, he was getting the strong impression from Eric Bischoff that he would never be put in a position past mid-card status in WCW as long as he was in charge. During this time, Mysterio would also capture his fifth cruiserweight title and would also even challenge Ric Flair for the WCW championship on an episode of Monday Nitro. From there, Mysterio began to team with Kidman again as they challenged and won the tag team titles from the Four Horsemen team of Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko. The year of 1999 was a definite mishmash of championship reigns as the cruiserweight and tag titles and seemingly every other title for that matter seemed to change hands on a weekly basis. Ray at this point was both tag champion and cruiserweight champion and he would lose the cruiserweight title and win it back during this time before he and Kidman eventually dropped the tag team titles a couple weeks later. Did you get all that? So basically by the summer of 99 Mysterio had been cruiserweight champion five times as well as the tag team champion and had been maskless since February of that same year. From there, Ray would join back up with his old buddy Conan, and the two would begin to be featured alongside the No Limit Soldiers. The No Limit Soldiers were a group of rappers and such, led by Master P, who was just insanely over in the music game at that time. For some reason, WCW thought this would translate to their wrestling product and be successful. Long story short, it was not. But it was good for a classic rap versus country music feud with the stable, wait for it, the West Texas Rednecks. After WCW quickly decided they were washing money away by hiring Master P week after week, that angle was scrapped 
and an audible was called to turn Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, and Billy Kidman into a group known as the Filthy Animals. Ray would hold the cruiserweight belt through this time until August 19th, 1999, when he would lose it to Lenny Lane, of all guys. Two months later, in October of 99, Mysterio would team up with Conan to become a tag team champion once again. This is how Mysterio would spend the rest of 1999 on the shelf due to injury, but returned to WCW in early 2000 to join the New Blood faction while still being a member of the Filthy Animals, which was now minus Eddie Guerrero as Guerrero had left for WWE in January along with several other WCW wrestlers that were unhappy. Mysterio continued working with WCW through the rest of 2000, all the way up until the company died in early 2001, adding one more tag team title reign in there with Kidman in the summer of 2000. After WCW closed, Rey Mysterio would inevitably return to Mexico this time wrestling 10 matches for rival promotion CMLL instead of his alma mater AAA. Ray would also travel back to the States to do spot shows as well and spend time in Puerto Rico wrestling for WWC. It was only a matter of time before WWE came calling as they had purchased WCW the year prior but had neglected to take on any big time contracts from former WCW performers. In 2002, those old Turner deals began expiring and Vince McMahon then began to write the checks. In the summer of 2002, vignettes began airing for the debut of Rey Mysterio. The junior had been dropped from the name. Rey would debut for the WWE wearing his mask. This has always been an interesting topic to me that I could maybe stretch even a whole other video on, but the fact that Rey Mysterio returned to wearing the mask was pretty surprising to me. Uh, given the longtime Lucha Libre culture and the mask, almost as sacred as the act of wearing the mask itself, it was also thought to be pretty much a final deal when someone would lose their mask probably being considered disrespectful to Lucha Libre and the opponent who took the mask. Either way, Mysterio was back in a big way and was immediately embraced by the WWE audience. Mysterio quickly feuded with Kurt Angle, which produced some memorable bouts. From there, Mysterio was booked into a random tag team with Edge. This was more or less the same old story of Vince McMahon just not knowing what to do or where to go with a hot signing that he had just made. Mysterio and Edge won the tag team titles and held them for a matter of weeks. Then the holdover tag team was broken up. Mysterio started 2003 without much direction but ultimately ended up being placed right in the thick of the cruiserweight division, which was being revamped by WWE at the time. And by June 5th, 2003, Mysterio would capture his first WWE cruiserweight championship by defeating Matt Hardy. Initial reign lasted three months before Ray would drop the cruiserweight title to Tajiri. Ray would toil around for the rest of the year, and in early 2004 seemed primed to repeat the year prior by being the institution of the cruiserweight division. At the end of 2004, Mysterio found himself as a tag team champion once again, this time by teaming with Rob Van Dam to defeat the team of Kenzo Suzuki and Rene Dupree who were perhaps the greatest tag team ever formed. Yes, that was a joke. After an injury to Rob Van Dam, Eddie Guerrero stepped in as Ray's partner, and from there, the two carried the tag team titles twice during the year of 2005. 
Eddie would end up turning heel on Ray, and this would transition them into their infamous feud where the two battled over custody of Dominic Mysterio. Yes, the same Dominic Mysterio who is currently on WWE programming, teaming with his father, Ray, after winning custody of his son in a ladder match and then defeating Guerrero again in a steel cage match on SmackDown in September of 2005. That feud would draw to a conclusion. Sadly, just two months later, on November 13th, 2005, Eddie Guerrero passed away. Despite the news, Mysterio worked an emotional match against Shawn Michaels, in which Ray won and without question was a very emotional series of events for Ray Mysterio. It seems that around this time, the decision was made to take Ray Mysterio and really put the rocket behind him as the face of the WWE's Latino universe. Ray was put over against the Big Show and then proceeded to have tag team title runs with Batista, which would ultimately set up Rey Mysterio winning the Royal Rumble, which would take Rey to WrestleMania 22, where he would win his first ever World Heavyweight Championship. Mysterio's title reign was short but memorable, coming to a close in July of 2005 after losing to King Booker. From there, Mysterio was sent back down to the mid-card and started having a long-running feud with Chavo Guerrero, which I suppose that was meant to elevate Chavo, but in all reality, the feud did not move the meter much. From there, I think it's safe to say that Rey Mysterio settled into his money-making work with the WWE. Mysterio, seen as a bona fide main event talent and star, and rightfully so, he was used as a major player, but obviously there was not so much of a grand plan for him at the time. At WrestleMania 25 in March of 2008, Mysterio captured gold again by defeating JBL in 21 seconds to capture the Intercontinental Championship. Mysterio then transitioned into a feud with Chris Jericho for most of those next few months before on August 2nd, 2009, WWE announced that Rey Mysterio was going to be suspended 30 days due to a violation of WWE's wellness policy. Mysterio claims that he had a prescription for a drug for his arm and knee, but could not produce it at the time, so as a result, he was served with his first strike and suspended. Mysterio served his suspension and returned to a push that included a WWE Championship match at the Royal Rumble against his former partner, Batista. Mysterio was unsuccessful at the Rumble and was transitioned into a feud with CM Punk, which would carry into WrestleMania 26 in March of 2010. I don't think it can be overstated here just how much Rey Mysterio meant to the WWE at this point, and still even to this day. Rey Mysterio by this point in his career was definitely a made man. Mysterio is a stronghold to this day, and remains an inspiration to young fans with his persona. However, WWE may not have completely seen him this way at that point. By the next year's WrestleMania in 2011, Ray was embroiled in an undercard feud with Cody Rhodes, which was very forgettable, completely erased from my mind until doing research from this video. Things would get better for Mysterio as he would soon work his way back up near the top of the card, doing another feud with CM Punk, who was elevated even more himself at this time. Mysterio would win the WWE Championship in the summer of 2011, albeit for just a matter of hours before losing it back to John Cena. From there, Ray was used frequently to put over the new heel Alberto Del Rio. 
Mysterio was left without much to do before in months of April of 2012. Ray was suspended with his second wellness policy suspension. This one would get him on the sidelines for 60 days. Upon Mysterio's return to WWE after suspension, he was almost immediately paired in a tag team with Sin Cara, the former Mystico in Mexico. Now, in Mexico, Mystico was a huge deal, and his signing to the WWE as Sin Cara was heavily hyped for many reasons. Sin Cara didn't quite take with the WWE audience and I suppose this was the attempt to recourse by pairing Cara with Mysterio. Mysterio was unhappy with the direction of the team, but stayed true to what he was asked to do and remained in the team with Sin Cara for the rest of the year. By March of 2013, Mysterio would be on the shelf with a knee injury once again. By the end of 2013, Mysterio would return from that injury, but it was clear at this point WWE was thinking of him as a mere setup guy. In March of 2014, Mysterio would compete in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal at WrestleMania, which is the match for all the guys who have no long-term plans, and that's exactly where Mysterio had ended up. After WrestleMania 30 in 2014, Mysterio would spend the rest of the year wanting out of the WWE. However, WWE had added time to his contract spent while injured. Just one of the many nice ways and nice things that WWE Talent Relations does for its talent over the years. Finally, in February of 2015, Mysterio was granted his release from WWE after a near 13-year run with the company. Just five days after parting ways with WWE, Mysterio announced he'd be returning to the AAA promotion in Mexico for the first time since 1995. The big-time tag team match where Mysterio would team with Mestizas against Pero Aguayo Jr. and Pentagon Jr. The match ended in tragedy as after a drop kick to the back, Aguayo went limp instead of setting up for the 619. Aguayo ended up dying in the ring. An official result was ruled as a cardiac arrest. As you can imagine how difficult this would be for Ray and the rest of the performers and families involved as this was such a huge and sad tragedy. Mysterio continued his run with AAA which included a feud with his former partner, Mestizas. By the end of 2016, Mysterio would leave AAA over financial issues. Mysterio then turned into a pretty hot commodity on the indie wrestling circuit. His asking price, though, very high. He was mainly used on only the biggest of the biggest indie wrestling shows. From there, Mysterio signed a contract with Lucha Underground and performed in the second season of that series. In 2018, Mysterio wrestled one-off matches for New Japan Pro Wrestling and some stuff in AAA in Mexico, while also concurrently working with WWE as he had returned at the Royal Rumble that year. And by September of 2018, Mysterio inked a two-year contract with the WWE, which brings us into his current run with the company, which has been mainly as a legacy-type star, but basically relegated to a mid-card status by being paired with his son, Dominic Mysterio, who at this point has a ceiling of mid-card tag team matches. Who knows what the future will hold for Ray? But it looks like he is comfortable in the WWE family at this point, and for better or for worse, especially since his success is hand in hand with Dominic's future. Mysterio has held 15 championships in WWE alone, and is coming close to being an active performer for 30 years. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you're subscribed to Pro Wrestling Planet. And we will see you next time. Uh, yo!
Yo, yo, it's your boy JTG, aka J the God, one half of the illest tag team ever, Crime Time, and you are watching Pro Wrestling Planet, and we all know Pro Wrestling Planet is about that money, money, yeah, yeah, that money, money, yeah, yeah, cheer!